Larry, thanks. Tonight, Scientology, beyond the public face you may already know, beyond the celebrities and the good deeds, tonight, former church insiders paint a much different picture. Allegations of beatings and humiliations carried out by the leader of the Church of Scientology and others. Allegations of a culture of violence within the top levels of the church. Allegations the church adamantly denies. In fact, the church says those making these charges are themselves the abusers, demoted and removed because of their violence. Well, tonight and every night this week, what our investigation uncovered, what the accusers say, and what the church has to say about it all. All of it out on the table so you can decide for yourself who's lying and who is telling the truth. Here's a short preview. In late 03, there was a beating every day. And if it wasn't him doing it, it was from him inciting others to do it to others. In front of other people. In front of other people. Go along, baby. Morty Rathbun is the highest ranking former member of the Church of Scientology ever to speak out against its leader, David Miscavige. I was basically Mr. Fix-It for Scientology for a number of, well, a couple of decades, frankly. I mean, I was, wherever there was a fire, I, I was out there to put it out, whether it be, you know, counseling a VIP member or whether it be, you know, handling the PR from some suicide of a member or whether it be a lawsuit or whatever. Rathbun joined the church at the age of 19, devoting 27 years to Scientology. Before he left five years ago, he was a member of the Sea Organization, the international management team that runs the church. They sometimes wear naval-style uniforms. They're given room and board and earn just $50 a week. Rathbun became the inspector general, working for and reporting directly to David Miscavige. While Rathbun was there, he says Miscavige routinely assaulted church members. He treats his, his, his subordinates in, in all of international management like, um, like slaves in a slave camp and literally and beats them down. Church officials and their attorneys say Marty Rathbun is a liar. First of all, the allegations are absolutely untrue. There, there, there was nothing of the sort, um, as they're describing, um, by Mr. Miscavige. David Miscavige has reform. never kicked somebody. Absolutely Never not. punched somebody. Absolutely not. Never strangled somebody. Never, 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 never. never. Absolutely not. Tonight, some startling allegations involving the Church of Scientology. We've spent months on this investigation, and every night this week, we're going to bring you the information that we've been looking into. But before we begin tonight, we just want to give you a brief overview of the Church. The Church of Scientology was founded by a science fiction writer named L. Ron Hubbard in 1954. Its stated goals to help people, quote, live in a civilization without insanity, without criminals, and without war, where the able can prosper and honest beings can have rights. Members pay to take courses designed to help them work through issues from their past and reach a higher state of consciousness. L. Ron Hubbard died in 1986, and now this man, David Miscavige, is the leader. He oversees a religious order responsible for church management called the Sea Organization. Members sometimes wear naval-style uniforms and dedicate their lives to the church. Scientology has opened some 170 churches across the globe and claim 10 million members worldwide. Church spokesman Tommy Davis. Dave Miscavige is responsible for the current renaissance that the church is experiencing. And the fact is the church has doubled in size in the last five years and has flourished under his leadership. The American Religious Identification Survey, however, cites much lower numbers. According to its survey, the number of self-described practicing Scientologists in the U.S. actually dropped from just 55,000 to 25,000 from 2001 to 2008. Last year, a French court found four church leaders and the church itself guilty of fraud for pressuring its members to pay large sums of money for questionable financial gain. The court imposed fines on the church of more than $1 million, and French church officials were handed suspended prison sentences. In the U.S., after years of battling the IRS, the church was granted tax-exempt status in 1993. The church operates many anti-drug programs, and recently, church volunteers flew to Haiti to help with relief efforts after the devastating earthquake. The church is a vocal critic of psychiatry. They've even opened an anti-psychiatry museum in Los Angeles. For years, the church has reached out to well-known performers and caters to their needs with a celebrity center in Hollywood. Kirstie Alley and John Travolta are longtime Scientologists, as is Tom Cruise. Being a Scientologist, when you drive past an accident, it's not like anyone else. As you drive past, you know you have to do something about it because you know you're the only one that can really help. Cruise is so close to church leader David Miscavige, he asked him to be his best man at his wedding. 
Here's Cruz praising Miscavige at a Scientology event in 2007. So I say to you, Sir COB, we are lucky to have you, and thank you very much. But the man who used to be Tom Cruise's counselor or auditor in Scientology parlance says not everything is as it seems with David Miscavige. Marty Rathbun, who used to work directly under Miscavige, says there's been a culture of violence within the leadership of the church, a culture encouraged by David Miscavige himself. He treats his subordinates in, in all of international management like, um, like slaves in a slave camp and literally and beats them down. It's a claim the church vigorously denies. Church spokesman Tommy Davis says, yes, there was violence in the church, but he blames Marty Rathbun for it, as well as some others now making allegations against David Miscavige. First of all, the allegations are absolutely untrue. There, there, there was nothing of the sort, um, as they're describing, um, by Mr. Miscavige. David Miscavige has never wrong. kicked somebody, absolutely never not. punched somebody, absolutely not. never strangled somebody. No, never, 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 never. Absolutely not. In a moment, we'll detail the fascinating claims, counterclaims, and turmoil surrounding the Church of Scientology. And that part of our series, in just a moment, right after commercial break, let us know what you think. You can join the live chat at ac360.com. Also had some of the church leaders, including the main accuser's ex-wife. They say he's lying. Stay tuned. You can judge for yourself. More now on our investigation into the Church of Scientology. We got curious after reading a series of stories in the St. Petersburg Times. We've been building on what we've learned for months. But as you'll see, not only does Scientology deny all the allegations, they say the people making them are liars out to destroy the church. The most senior leaders of the church made their objections clear for months, but would not sit down to talk about them, at least not without preconditions, until today. After our report, we'll be playing excerpts of those interviews. We want to make very clear, this is not a story about the philosophy of the church or the beliefs of its members. This is a story about alleged abuse within a religious organization and what those who have made the allegations say has happened to them. In late 03, there was a beating every day. And if it wasn't him doing it, it was from him inciting others to do it to others. In front of other people. In front of other people. Go along, baby. Morty Rathbun is the highest ranking former member of the Church of Scientology ever to speak out against its leader, David Miscavige. I was basically Mr. Fix-It for Scientology for a number of, well, a couple of decades, frankly. I mean, I was, wherever there was a fire, I, I was out there to put it out, whether it be, you know, counseling a VIP member or whether it be, you know, handling the PR from some suicide of a member or whether it be a lawsuit or whatever. Rathbun joined the church at the age of 19, devoting 27 years to Scientology. Before he left five years ago, he was a member of the Sea Organization, the international management team that runs the church. They sometimes wear naval-style uniforms. They're given room and board and earn just $50 a week. Rathbun became the inspector general, working for and reporting directly to David Miscavige. While Rathbun was there, he says Miscavige routinely assaulted church members. He treats his, his, his subordinates in, in all of international management like, um, like slaves in a slave camp and literally and beats them down. The idea of the leader of the church physically beating other members of the church seems to be completely against Scientology doctrine or what they're supposedly all about. You're right. They're absolutely diametrically opposed to the type of violence and beatdowns that this guy engages in and has created a culture of at the upper levels of Scientology. According to Rathbun, much of the violence occurred here, behind the guarded walls of the church's international headquarters, a 500-acre base near Riverside, California, where the Sea Organization managers work and live in communal housing. Sea Organization members signed a pledge to work for the church for one billion years, a contract for this lifetime and many others they believe are still to come. Rathbun says Sea Organization members believe the commitment is part of their eternal salvation, he says most rank-and-file Scientologists have no idea what really goes on here. The only people who know about it are people on that base, and the only ones of those who know about it are in international management. Actually, probably a couple of 300 probably know, because they've seen one or more incidents. But um, those are the only people that know. Rathman says this man, Mike Rinder, who was chief spokesman for the church, bore the brunt of the alleged abuse. One night in 1997, towards Christmas time, I get called down to Miscavige's room. Miscavige kicks the screen door open to his bedroom and comes running out in a terry cloth robe and just starts beating on Mike Rinder. I mean savagely beating on him across the face, in the stomach. You know, Mike bends over. Miscavige grabs him around the neck. There's a little tree by his, by his room. 
swings him around, scrapes his face against a tree, down into the mud, and starts kicking the guy. Rainer's bleeding from the mouth because his face got scraped right across that tree. There's not a word said, Anderson. He never said a word to Rinder. Rathbun says in 2000, he saw David Miscavige attack Mike Rinder again in a conference room. Miscavige came in, pinned Rinder up uh, under the table in his chair, and was whacking him upside the head, and then grabbed him around the, rat the neck, uh, choked him, and twisted him around and threw him to the ground by his neck. He had uh, marks on his neck for a week. Mike Rinder left the church in 2007. We tracked him down, and though he refused to appear on camera, he told us he was physically assaulted some 50 times by Miscavige and verified Rathbun's accounts. Church officials and their attorneys say both former Sea Organization members are liars. First of all, the allegations are absolutely untrue. There, there, there was nothing of the sort um, as they're describing um, by Mr. Miscavige. David Miscavige has never form. kicked somebody. Absolutely Never not. punched somebody. Absolutely not. Never strangled somebody. No. Never, 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 never. Absolutely not. That's Tommy That's Davis, right. a Scientologist for 20 years. He replaced Mike Rinder as chief spokesman for the church when after 38 years as a church member, Rinder quit. Marty Rathburn says it happened. Mike Rinder says it happened. You say... They're yeah. lying. It's absolutely not true. I mean, it's ridiculous. David Miscavige has declined to speak for himself. But in the months we've spent preparing these reports, Church of Scientology officials have provided us with affidavits, declarations, and dozens of emails and letters. They come from ex-spouses and current leaders of the church who worked for decades with the accusers and also with David Miscavige. They both defend and praise Miscavige, and they assert emphatically David Miscavige never abused anyone. They say that Mike Rinder and Marty Rathbun did. It was part of what led to uh, Marty Rathbun's removal because that is the kind of behavior that actually he was involved in, and it led to his uh, ultimate complete removal from any position whatsoever in the church. So you're saying that David Miscavige learned that Marty Rathbun had been hitting people, that's right. people physically assaulting that's people, right. and that's why he was let go? It was uh, one no, of the reasons. It was one of the reasons. And for the record, did you ever punch anybody? Yes. Marty Rathbun admits he assaulted church employees, but insists that's what David Miscavige wanted him to do. Yeah, listen, I was, had a lot of pressure put on me because I was the inspector general, which was the position directly below him on the whole ecclesiastical hierarchy for years and years. And he used to rag on me all the time and constantly push me to get physical with people and, and berate me because I wasn't showing my loyalty by, you know, smacking them into line type of thing. And I got to tell you, I've admitted to, some, to, 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 to doing a few of those, but not like he did. In their affidavit, the former Sea Organization co-workers and ex-spouses dispute Rinder and Rathbun's claims. The ex-spouses say they never saw any physical evidence of abuse, and they say their husbands never said a word. But it turns out Rathbun and Rinder are not the only ones saying there was a culture of violence created by David Miscavige. The next thing I knew, I'm being smacked in the face and knocked down in the ground. In front of all these people. This is the Pope. You know, knocking me down on the ground. David Miscavige was the one leading this whole physical violence kick. And it was him who was beating people up. Tomorrow, their story and the church's response. As we mentioned earlier, it took top church leaders until today to sit down with us without any preconditions to discuss the allegations against their leader. They, along with the ex-wives of the men you just saw, say Marty Rathbun is lying, that he was the violent one. They call him bitter and angry, the man who had him removed from his position in the church. Now, here's an excerpt of the interview with the ex-wives. I asked them about some affidavits signed by senior church leaders that indicated a number of violent incidents stretching over several years. No police were ever called, no charges were ever filed, and the church claims the leader of the church had no idea what was happening at the time. In 2003, it came up that Marty Rathbun had been mistreating others. And at that so point for, in time... So for about three years, according to members of the church, mm -hmm. your husband was physically assaulting... It was, in, it was isolated incidents. It well, well, this isn't isolated incidents. This is a consistent, virulent uh, physical harassment. Yeah, you're... That, we understand what you're saying, yeah. and here's the, the fact. No, what I'm saying is that you, 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 you were married to a man who for three years had a, was a high-ranking member of this church who was assaulting people, and, and, and Mr. nothing Miscavige, seems to be done about it. Mr. Miscavige was not at the, at the property at the time. Do you not have telephones? Of course we have telephones. So I, I think you, you're being quite rude and quite yeah. insulting. Here's the bottom line. 
Here's the bottom line. There is no history of violence in the church. That there was isolated instances, and yes, you have that you do have written declarations that Marty Rathman was a violent man. He was a violent psychotic man. Now we want you to hear from another senior leader of the church, a man who worked closely with the church's founder, L. Ron Hubbard. He too strongly defends Hubbard's successor, David Miscavige, and is insisting Marty Rathman is making false accusations. Let's keep this in the perspective of what it is. Marty Rathbun is the perpetrator of this. As I said in my affidavit too, there is a saying in Scientology called the overt, which is like a transgression, doth speak loudly in accusation. The man's bitter, he's an apostate, he's defrocked, he's out, he's not a Scientologist, he never, ever, ever will be a Scientologist again. He is now pointing the finger to my senior. That's like a monk or a priest who has now been caught out by the Pope for doing things, pedophile, whatever you want, inside the church, he's been kicked out, and now he's turning around pointing finger to the Pope? When, no, this is not okay. Well, there's much more to these interviews, which we'll be bringing you all this week on 360. Going back to last August, we've asked many times that Church of Scientology Chairman of the Board, David Miscavige, appear on 360 for this series. His spokesman, Tommy Davis, has declined from Mr. Miscavige, but our invitation is still open. We'd love to have him on the program. As always, you can dig deeper online at ac360.com. And if you want to learn more about Scientology from the church's perspective, we've put up a link. Our series continues tomorrow with others now speaking out about what they say went on. Hey, Larry, thanks so much. Tonight, our investigation into the Church of Scientology widens. More voices who say the church condoned at the highest levels a climate of violence. Allegations of beatings, humiliations carried out by the church's leader. And what the church tonight has to say about it, including ex-wives of some of the accusers coming forward to flat out call them liars. Here's a short preview. Jeff Hawkins was a Scientologist for 35 years. A marketing director for the church, he was a member of the Sea Organization the group that runs church operations worldwide. Hawkins, who left in 2005, says Miscavige attacked him several times, including once during a marketing meeting. He jumped up on the conference room table, like with his feet right on the conference room table, launched himself across the table at me, I was standing, battered my face, and then shoved me down on the floor. Tom DeVock was a construction manager for the church. He was only 12 years old when he joined. He left in 2005 because he says he could no longer accept Miscavige's violence. Dave asked me a question, and I couldn't tell you what the question is today. I don't remember. But the next thing I knew, I'm being smacked in the face and knocked down on the ground in front of all these people. This is the Pope, you know, knocking me down on the ground. Church spokesman Tommy Davis. These are individuals who have proven not only that they will lie, but that they will get other people to lie. It's not much of a stretch for them to all get together, corroborate their stories, find some other people who've left years ago to try and corroborate it even more, and then come to the news media and attack the very person who removed them. Part two of our week-long special report, Scientology, History of Violence, just ahead tonight. Last night we told you about Marty Rathbun, a 27-year member and one of the highest-ranking leaders of the Church of Scientology. He left in 2005, but says that while he was there, the head of the church, David Miscavige, routinely beat other high-ranking members of the church. Rathbun said not only did Miscavige brutally kick, punch, and choke members of the church's international management team, the Sea Organization, in particular Mike Rinder, the church's former spokesman, he also says Miscavige encouraged a corporate culture in which other managers were expected to get physical. Rathbun admits he himself assaulted subordinates, but says it was done with the encouragement of David Miscavige himself. As for the church, it vigorously denies their claims, asserting that Rathbun is a bald-faced liar who was fired because he himself assaulted members of the church, or at least demoted. And tonight, as we continue our investigation, you'll hear from other high-ranking Scientologists saying that David Miscavige was the one behind the violence, although the church emphatically denies it. Miscavige was always threats bullying, haranguing people, uh, verbal abuse, physical abuse. That was his game. He's, he is a bully. Jeff Hawkins was a Scientologist for 35 years, a marketing director for the church. He was a member of the Sea Organization, the group that runs church operations worldwide. He had dedicated his life to Scientology. A true believer, he earned just $50 a week and lived in church-provided communal housing with other Sea Org members in California. You've worked with Marty Rathbun, you've worked with Mike Rinder. The church told us that they were the ones leading uh, this reign of terror, that, that, that Marty was the one responsible for, for these beatings. Absolutely not true. 
absolutely not true. David Miscavige was the one leading this whole physical violence kick. And it was him who was beating people up. Hawkins, who left in 2005, says Miscavige attacked him several times, including once during a marketing meeting. He jumped up on the conference room table, like with his feet right on the conference room table, launched himself across the table at me. I was standing, battered my face, and then shoved me down on the floor. Tom DeVock was a construction manager for the church. He was only 12 years old when he joined. He left in 2005 because he says he could no longer accept Miscavige's violence. Dave asked me a question, and I couldn't tell you what the question is today. I don't remember. But the next thing I knew, I'm being smacked in the face and knocked down on the ground in front of all these people. This is the Pope, you know, knocking me down on the ground. Amy Scobie, a Scientologist for 27 years, helped run the Celebrity Center in Los Angeles, designed to cater to the needs of famous members like Tom Cruise and John Travolta. She says she also left in 2005, but distinctly remembers watching David Miscavige choke Mike Rinder, the church spokesman at the time. He grabs Mike around the neck, swings around, and is choking him, and he's holding his neck. And, and Mike's just like grabbing the side of his chair and like struggling, like w not knowing what was going on. And um, his face is turning red and, um, and, and the veins are popping in his neck. And I'm going, what in the hell is going on? Steve Hall was a writer for the church who left in 2004. He says he saw Miscavige attack Mike Rinder again in November of 2003. He grabs Mike. Mike's head with both his hands, throws Mike off his feet because he's strong and he put his whole body into this. He smashed Mike's head against this cherry wood uh, wall. Church of Scientology spokesman Tommy Davis insists that all these former Scientologists are liars. Bitter former Sea Organization members who were demoted from their positions by David Miscavige. He says Mike Rinder was asked about rumors of abuse two years ago by the BBC when he was still spokesman for the church. He had been asked these same allegations and uh, one of his responses was, uh, I'll tell you what, if you come up with that again and show up with another one of those crap allegations, I'm going to file a complaint. He's talking about this BBC interview in 2007, recorded by Scientologists and posted on YouTube just before Mike Rinder left the church. He says, what you do, the devil you find an absolute you down anonymous, the that's absolute rubbish, 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 not true, rubbish. But now that Mike Rinder is no longer working for David Miscavige, he says he was lying during that interview. He wouldn't appear on camera, but he told us that he was physically assaulted by David Miscavige some 50 times. He lied to the BBC, he says, because he didn't want to lose his career and his church. That doesn't surprise Jeff Hawkins, who says when he was in the church, he would have never spoken against Miscavige. If you want to stay in the church, you have to do what he says. That's right. That's right. He literally holds, if, you if you're a, a, a Scientologist and you believe in Scientology, and you believe that the only way to your spiritual salvation is through the levels of Scientology, then he literally holds the power of life and death over every Scientologist, because he can say, you're out of here. You, you will get no, no more Scientology services. You're done. The church says Hawkins is out to destroy Scientology, adding that he supports an anti-Scientology movement called Anonymous that actively protests the church. These are individuals who have proven not only that they will lie, but that they will get other people to lie. It's not much of a stretch for them to all get together, corroborate their stories, find some other people who've left years ago to try and corroborate it even more, and then come to the news media and attack the very person who removed them. The church provided us with dozens of affidavits from current and former church members, one-time colleagues of these former Scientologists, even their ex-wives. All these affidavits swear David Miscavige never hurt anyone. I slept with Tom DeVock for almost 20 years. I knew every inch of him. I never saw one scratch. I never saw one bruise. I never saw one black eye. Nothing. Nor did he complain about anything personally. That's Tom DeVock's ex-wife, Jenny Linson. She agreed just this week to be interviewed along with the ex-wives of Mark Rathbun, Jeff Hawkins, and Mike Rinder. Mike Rinder's ex-wife, Catherine Bernardini, says he was never assaulted by David Miscavige. I know every square inch of Mike Rinder's body. I know everything that's ever happened to him, every accident, every time he broke his wrist, 
I, I've been with him. We've been together all our lives. It's utterly ridiculous, and it isn't true. And you were married to, to Marty Rathbun? Fifteen years. I know the man better than anybody else. Now, you got to understand, Marty Rathbun is a liar. He never mentioned it, okay? He, he says that he did mention it to you. No, he did not. Absolutely not. It's a lie. Catherine, your ex-husband, Jeff Hawkins, says about you that you have a heart of gold and that you're a good woman and that you stuck with him through some very trying times in Scientology. He does say that, that you were concerned... Whoa, whoa, hold on. He didn't have any trying times in Scientology. I don't... It was the best time of his life. She says Jeff Hawkins never said a thing to her about being hit. Did you tell anybody about this? I mean, did you complain about it? No. No, no. You don't do that when you're inside the base. You don't do that. Why? Well, uh, if you go against Miscavige, if you say anything against Miscavige, or you do anything, or you report on Miscavige, you're instantly off the base. And what does that mean to be off the base? It means You're on the rehabilitation project force, or you're sent to a remote location, or you're sent to Africa or Australia. You're just gotten rid of. Marty Rathbun says he did tell his wife, but never complained to anyone else about Miscavige. He had the power to say, you're, you're excommunicated and you'll never see Scientology again. You'll never see your wife again. You'll never see Scientology again. I mean, you've devoted 27 years to it, and this guy could pull the plug just like that and say, you can't ever have it again. Tomorrow, what Marty Rathbun says happens to those who leave the church and speak out. Just a note for you, after last night's report, we again extended an invitation to Church of Scientology Chairman of the Board, David Miscavige, to appear on 360 for this series. We pointed out that through his spokesman, Miscavige had declined to respond to the charges himself. Well, today, CNN received this letter from a Scientology lawyer asserting that was flatly untrue and asking us not to say that again. So we just want to set the record straight. We'd like to play a portion of our interview with church spokesman Tommy Davis from last July. And Why not let yes, allow yeah. David Miscavige to speak? I mean, he's... Uh, oh, come on. <laughs> well, yeah. He speaks for himself very well. <laughs> but why not have uh, have him do an interview or address these charges directly? Oh, it's not worth his time. I mean, he's the ecclesiastical leader of the church. This is a global religion. You have people that he personally removed who are making these kinds of outrageous allegations. Not in a million years would he respond to something like that. Well, so to be clear, our invitation is still open. We'd love to have Mr. David Miscavige on 360 anytime. Over at ac360.com, you'll find a posting I wrote about why we're doing this series in the first place. And while you're there, you can also watch last night's report. Coming up, the crisis in Haiti. By the way, we'll have more tomorrow and all this week. Larry, thanks so much. Tonight and all this week, our series of special reports on the Church of Scientology. Allegations by former insiders that the church's top leadership condoned, encouraged, even committed acts of violence. Also, the denial is just as vigorous from the church itself, which is blaming the violence on those former insiders. Two starkly different versions. Only one of them can be the truth. Someone is lying. First coming forward last year in the St. Petersburg Times with allegations of abuse against church leader David Miscavige, Marty Rathbun and five other former high-ranking Scientologists have found themselves under vigorous attack by the church they once dedicated their lives to. The former Scientologists are accused of working together to destroy the church. Tommy Davis is the church spokesman. The church is going to defend itself. It's going to defend itself for its own sake, and it's going to defend itself for the sake of its parishioners. And the fact of the matter is, is these individuals are out there, and they're lying. Current and former senior Scientologists sent CNN dozens of declarations, emails, and affidavits defending the church and its leader, and attacking the credibility of those who've spoken out. Thank you very much. In sworn affidavits, a number of church members make specific allegations against Marty Rathbun, including more than a dozen instances of physical violence. The affidavits are from people who, who said, within the church, who said the beatings and the physical abuse what was not perpetrated by David Miscavige, but was perpetrated by you. Right. Outright lies. I did some, and I didn't come in here ever telling you I was little Lord Fauntleroy and never did anything wrong. I'm no angel. I'm going to tell you, I was involved in this. But for God's sake, to try to make it sound like I perpetuated the whole thing is just a complete and utter fa fabrication. You can decide for yourself who to believe, but even these competing versions of what happened still raise questions that the public is entitled to know. What was going on in the church, and why would the police never call to investigate? Scientology, a history of violence, that's tonight and all week, just ahead.
Over the last two nights, we've told you about allegations of physical abuse made by former high-ranking members of the Church of Scientology against the church's leader, David Miscavige. Now, the church not only denies all those allegations, but says they come from people who are working together to destroy the church. And the church says one of the people making allegations was demoted and then removed from his senior position precisely because he was violent. Well, tonight, how even the competing versions of what happened ultimately raised questions that the public's entitled to know. What was going on in the church, and why were the police never called to investigate? In Leto 3, there was a beating every day. And if it wasn't him doing it, it was from him inciting others to do it to others. In front of other people. In front of other people. Since first coming forward last year in the St. Petersburg Times with allegations of abuse against church leader David Miscavige, Marty Rathbun and five other former high-ranking Scientologists have found themselves under vigorous attack by the church they once dedicated their lives to. The former Scientologists are accused of working together to destroy the church. Tommy Davis is the church spokesman. The church is going to defend itself. It's going to defend itself for its own sake, and it's going to defend itself for the sake of its parishioners. And the fact of the matter is, is these individuals are out there, and they're lying. Current and former senior Scientologists sent CNN dozens of declarations, emails, and affidavits defending the church and its leader, and attacking the credibility of those who've spoken out. Thank you very much. The church says former construction manager Tom DeVocht was violent and wasted millions of church dollars during his time in the Sea Organization, the church's religious order. They allege former spokesman Mike Rinder physically attacked his subordinates and said former marketing manager Jeff Hawkins has attended rallies with an anti-Scientology movement called Anonymous, which protests against the church. Most of the church's affidavits specifically name Marty Rathbun, whom they say assaulted members of the Sea Organization on numerous occasions. The affidavits are from people who, who said within the church, who said the beatings and the physical abuse was not perpetrated by David Miscavige, but was perpetrated by you. Right outright lies I did some and I didn't come in here ever telling you I was little Lord Fauntleroy and never did anything wrong I'm no angel I'm gonna tell you I was involved in this but for God's sake to try to make it sound like I perpetuated the whole thing is just a complete and utter fa fabrication in sworn affidavits a number of church members make specific allegations against Marty Rathbun including more than a dozen instances of physical violence one person writes she witnessed Rathbun hitting a colleague, quote, about the head and in the face while yelling at him. Another writes Rathbun, quote, walked into the office and appeared upset with me, adding he suddenly punched me in the stomach. And his own ex-wife says Marty Rathbun lives for war. People, ma many of them who, who you know very well, they all say David Miscavige is kind. They say he's hardworking. That he's a passionate man who's done really nothing but good for the church. They will say anything they need to say, Anderson. Current senior members of the Sea Organization say that while their former colleague, Marty Rathbun, was repeatedly violent, for many years, none of them informed the church's leader, David Miscavige. That guy had the streak of violence. Right. Four you know? occasions between 2000 and 2002 to you, Mr. Starkey, as well as at least five incidents in 2001. So that's nine incidents between 2000 and 2002. Yeah, the that's not the right body rep, but he's gone. When it was found out, he's out of the church. So no there one can answer no me why David Miscavige was not informed for several I, years. I, I absolutely can finish. answer you. Mr. Miscavige was not there. He was not there, but there are telephones, you have fax machines, you have emails. Yeah, Why well, when somebody informed? blows up like a Marty Radburn or commits something, you don't immediately pick up the phone and call the leader of a World War religion. Well, you have four years to do it here. <clears throat> so no one over the course of four years informed David Miscavige that there that a high okay, ranking so member like of this church. No, we have it. We plus you have. There's something you don't understand. You can Martin say yes Radburn, and no. no. I'm just asking Martin the Radburn was not in the top position when that happened at all. He was, and, and you know, we. Yeah, well, he was. He was in. He was a member of the C organization. He was important enough to have an office next That's to right. you. Nobody informed David Miscavige mm -hmm. this was going on. That's Look, right. Here's the right. point: is, yes, is that right. when is is right. that when the point is is that when Mr. Miscavige was informed, Marty was removed. That's what matters. There's no physical evidence proving the former Scientologist's charges, just as the affidavits supporting Miscavige and attacking his critics also cannot be verified. But surprisingly, though they disagree on who was perpetrating it, both sides describe a work environment inside the church where punching, choking, and kicking as a means of discipline and intimidation occurred on numerous occasions. And no one ever filed criminal charges or even called the police.
Tommy Davis is the church spokesman, and Monique Yingling is an attorney for the church. How is it possible that a member of the church could assault about a dozen people and nobody come forward about it and nobody people file did. any charges? How come people. the church didn't file any charges if, in fact, Marty Rathbun was really beating people up? People did come forward about it, and there were reports written, as, uh, as Mr. Davis pointed out. And the reason that there were reports written was because it was very untoward. There may have been some people who decided they didn't want to report it, and they suffered it in silence. But there were indeed reports written. So why it. didn't the church then decide to proceed with charges? I mean, aggravated assault is, 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 a, is a felony. It's against he, the law. The church treated it as an internal matter, and he was disciplined internally. So I understand. You, you said that, that Marty Rathbun beat people more than a dozen times or so you said mike rinder has beat people and that was known apparently at the time at least some of it was known at the time a and yet that seemed to be acceptable behavior in the church i mean that, they, that, that no charges were ever filed uh, against any of these people well, seems they were remarkable to me they, if in fact that is really the truth uh, unless the opposite is true and their charges are true and it was the head of the church who was doing these beatings in which case it would make sense that no charge would be filed or no one would come forward well, they were removed. The point is, is that they were removed. The choice of the individuals who were attacked on to whether to file charges or not was completely their choice. But, but if they, this is they, so important to, to Scientology's beliefs, beatings, why then, it doesn't seem that it was taken all that seriously. Oh, it absolutely oh, I was. I think it I was just, taken I just, very, very seriously. I mean, I, I, if my boss is beating, went, well, me, started to beat me up here, and, and the head of Time Warner said, oh, well, you know, we're going to deal with it as an internal matter, I mean, I, I think that would be pretty shocking. Here's the thing. The point is, is, is that when it was discovered, he was disciplined and he was removed. Well, David Miscavige, the chairman of the board of Scientology, rarely meets the media. He's not done a news interview since 1998. We've offered many times for Mr. Miscavige to appear on 360 for this series, but his spokesman, Tommy Davis, has declined for Mr. Miscavige. Our invitation is still open. We'd love to have him on the program. Tomorrow night on 360, what happens to those who leave the church and speak out? You can go to ac360.com to watch parts one and two of our investigation. Again, our series continues tomorrow and Friday night. Over the past few nights, we've been reporting on allegations of physical abuse inside the Church of Scientology. The allegations have been made by a number of former high-ranking Scientologists against the Church's leader, David Miscavige himself. But even some of those who make the allegations also admit they were involved in violent acts. Now, the Church says they were the only ones involved in the violence, the accusers. And dozens of affidavits, current and former senior members of the church, say the allegations against David Miscavige are all lies. The church says the accusers are bitter and are working together to try to destroy the church. The accusers, some of whom still consider themselves Scientologists, say they don't want to destroy the church, just change the leadership. Well, tonight we look at what some of these former Scientologists say happened to them when they began to speak out. Jeff Hawkins had been a Scientologist for 35 years. A member of the elite management branch of the church, the Sea Organization, Hawkins says he witnessed several incidents of violence perpetrated by church leader David Miscavige and says he was also attacked by Miscavige. One time he punched me in the gut, just with no warning, as, as he was passing me. The church says Hawkins is lying and is out to destroy the religion. And he supports a group called Anonymous, which promotes an anti-Scientology movement. Hawkins concedes he never filed any criminal charges. Why not call the police? I mean, these are this is an assault. It would never have occurred to me. It would never have occurred to you. No, in fact, if the police had shown up and said, we heard that he beat you up, I would have said, no, no, no. Uh, I just fell down the stairs or something. It's like the battered wife. You know, the police show up and say, why are you all bruised? And she said, well, I just fell down the stairs. She defends the husband. And, and so people, people who believe in the religion, people who, who have dedicated their lives to it and want to stay in it, put up with it. They, they're not going to say anything. They're not going to say anything. Though he says he had a lot of trying times in the church, Hawkins says leaving Scientology in 2005 was a very difficult decision. It is very hard to leave, and that's why people don't, and why they tend to toe the line, because here I was, 58 years old when I left. I had no money. I had no job. I didn't know anybody outside of Scientology. I had no friends. And you left your wife? And I had to leave my wife. We, In fact... Uh, we never even discussed it. She was presented with divorce papers. She signed them. I was presented with them. I signed them. And we haven't spoken since. That, I mean, that's extraordinary. Yeah. Hawkins says he was declared a suppressive person, a church term for an enemy of Scientology or its principles. 
He says the church has a policy called disconnection, which pressures church members to cut off all ties with anyone declared suppressive. The church denies that families are separated like this, that, that people are told not to call other, other people who have left the church. They're always separated. If you have a family member who, is, who has been declared suppressive or who has been critical of the church, you cannot contact them if you're a Scientologist. If your son, daughter, father, mother uh, has left the church and is critical or anything like that, you cannot talk to them, period. He says that when he was declared a suppressive person, that was the last time you were allowed communication. That is a lie. That is an absolute, utter, total lie. Catherine Fraser was Jeff Hawkins' wife. She continues to hold a senior role in the Sea Organization. He paid for the divorce. He knew exactly what was happening. This is astonishing. He is a liar to the core. That is so not what happened. Catherine Bernardini says she was never told to disconnect from her ex-husband, Mike Rinder, the church's former spokesman who left in 2007. You're saying there is no policy of disconnection? No. Well, absolutely I did not at all disconnect from him. He was never told that. I said, no, I'm, I'm not going to drop everything I've had for my entire life and what I believe in and what Mike believed in. But Amy Scobie, another former Sea Organization member who once helped run the church's celebrity center in Los Angeles, says her mother was told to disconnect from her when she left. In fact, I was at her house when Scientologists came with the issue, my suppressive person issue, to tell her that she could no longer see me. I was in the back room. They didn't know I was there. And they showed her the issue saying how I violated command channels and had sex out of wedlock and all this stuff and you know um, and that until I got back in good standing with the church which I had no intention of doing she could not be in communication with me so she told me and uh, that she didn't have a choice it was the worst day of my life we asked church spokesman Tommy Davis and church attorney Monique Yingling about disconnection, and they denied the church forces any Scientologist to break off communication with a family member or friend. They do say, however, that no Scientologist would want to talk to a so-called suppressive person. You don't want to talk to someone who's attacking your religion. That's your personal choice. I mean, if Tommy were my brother and I were a Scientologist, and uh, he starts attacking the, the church nonstop, I might get to a point where I'd want to say, look, I don't want to talk to you anymore if all you're going to do is attack my religion. And that has happened in these situations. But it isn't the church saying you can't talk to this person, but individuals make decisions that they don't want to uh, have contact with someone who is attacking what is their life, essentially. Who a Scientologist chooses to be in communication with or not is the choice of that individual Scientologist, whether they're a member of the C organization, whether they're a par parishioner or otherwise. It is absolutely and completely their choice. Tommy Davis has said this before. Here's an interview last year with CNN. Anything that's characterized as disconnection or this kind of thing, it, it's just it's just not true. There, there isn't any such policy that in the church that that's dictating who people should or should not be in communication with. You know, it's it, it just doesn't happen. That denial and other disagreements with the church prompted Oscar-winning director Paul Haggis, a Scientologist for 35 years, to resign. In a letter to Tommy Davis, he mentioned the CNN interview. You said straight out there was no such policy, that it did not exist, he wrote. I was shocked. We all know this policy exists. You might recall that my wife was ordered to disconnect from her parents because of something absolutely trivial they supposedly did 25 years ago when they resigned from the church. To see you lie so easily, he wrote, I'm afraid I had to ask myself, what else are you lying about? Christy Colbrun, another former senior Scientology member, says she was declared a suppressive person after leaving the church four years ago. She still believes in Scientology, but says her parents, who remain in the church, refuse to have any contact with her. Now, Tommy Davis, who's now the chief spokesman for, for the church, has said to us that there is no policy of disconnection. Well, he, he's kind of put a little bit of a twist on it, because the truth of the matter is, um, it, it, it is your own choice to disconnect. You don't have to. You can say, no, I'm not going to disconnect. But then what happens to you is that you can't go into the church and other people won't speak to you. So there's ways of enforcing this. It's kind of a manipulative way. Yeah, you don't have to. My parents could have said, we're not disconnecting from, from our daughter. 
and then you know they would have had the repercussions of it from the rest of the Scientologists and they want to have something to do with this organization that their spiritual salvation is at risk and they don't want to lose that they don't want to lose maybe their jobs if they're working for a Scientologist so they decide well I'm not going to go there I'm just going to follow you know the, the orders and the commands and the things I'm being told to do so that I can not have my life messed up despite being labeled liars and being cut off from family members and friends Christie and many other former Scientologists who have now come forward to tell their stories say they do not want to destroy the church. Their problem, they say, is with the man who runs it, David Miscavige. Lies beyond her. Over the course of several months, we have repeatedly asked the church for an interview with Mr. Miscavige, but he has declined. Well, over the last few days, we've heard the allegations and counter-allegations of violent incidents among the current and former senior leadership of the church. Now, without physical evidence, it's impossible to prove who's telling the truth. But the seriousness and similarity of those allegations also make their stories impossible to ignore. The public's entitled to ask why has there been no proper police inquiry into what happened inside the Church of Scientology. Once again, we'd like to point out that we've invited leader of Scientology, David Miscavige, to appear on this program to talk about the accusations from the former Scientologist, but through his spokesman, he's declined. That offer, of course, still stands. Tomorrow on 360, three former members of the Church respond to accusations from their ex-wives who remain in senior leadership positions in the Church. Let us know what you think about it. Join the live chat at ac360.com. Over the past week, we've been reporting on allegations of physical abuse inside the Church of Scientology. The allegation has been made by a number of four former high-ranking Scientologists, former members of the Sea Organization, which is the Church's religious order. And the allegations are against the Church's leader, David Miscavige. The former Inspector General, Marty Rathbun, former spokesman of the Church, Mike Rinder, and other former members of the elite management group, including Jeff Hawkins, Tom DeVock, Amy Scobie, and Steve Hall, all have made allegations that David Miscavige used and encouraged, and encouraged physical abuse. Rathbun, Rinder, and Devok all admit to some acts of physical violence themselves, but say it was at the direction of encouragement of David Miscavige. They also say it wasn't to the extent that David Miscavige was punching, kicking, and choking subordinates. Now, the church strongly denies all those claims, sending us dozens of affidavits, emails, letters, calling those speaking out liars. They, they say Miscavige never abused members and insist only the accusers were the abusers. They also say it was because of that abuse that they were removed from positions of power within the church. Now, earlier this week, we spoke with the ex-wives of some of the men making the claims of abuse. The women who are current high-ranking seniors in the Church of Scientology told us that their ex-husbands are bitter and out to destroy the person who removed them from power, saying they're working in collusion in an attempt to seek revenge against the church's leaders. Here's more of my interview with them. I read all of your affidavits. Obviously, your ex-husbands have made charges against David Miscavige, saying that they have seen repeated acts of physical violence perpetrated by Mr. Miscavige. I I is any of that true? No, no, not one no. ounce of it. Not one. Why, why do you think they're saying these things? I think that they are bitter individuals who once had a life that had glory and some form of power, and they now have nothing. They have no job. They have no life. And the media is giving them attention, and they're going for that attention. But we personally know, I mean, I slept with Tom DeVock for almost 20 years. I knew every inch of him. If he ever complained about something, if he had a headache, if he had a backache, he had me rub his feet at night. I mean, I was his wife. I never saw one scratch. I never saw one bruise. I never saw one black eye, nothing. Nor did he complain about anything personally. And he would have told me because any, anything that would happen, <laughs> I would know about. And besides that, that's not the character of Mr. David Miscavige. Nothing like that. It's outrageous that these men are doing that, and they're bitter, and they're getting attention from the media. And you were married to, to Marty Rathbun? Fifteen years. I know the men better than anybody else. Now, you got to understand, Marty Rathbun is a liar, okay? When he left, he's alleging that when he left in 2004, it was because he witnessed Mr. Miscavige beating somebody up or whatever. As, right after he left, I'm the first person he called. He called me right away. And it never came up. He never mentioned it, okay? He says that he did mention it to you. No, he did not. Absolutely not. It's a lie. Catherine, how about you were married to Jeff Hawkins? Well, yes, I was married to Jeff Hawkins during the entire time of these allegations that he said apparently happened. I was, you know, we were very close. Obviously, we were married. He used to tell me about everything he did, the meetings he went to, etc. He never mentioned one thing. To the contrary, he mentioned to me how much Mr. David Miscavige supported him, how much he believed in him. 
Okay, I think you were married to, to Mike Rinder yeah, I for was. a long time. Uh, he says that, that he was beaten by David Miscavige some 50 times. And, and multiple people have also said that they saw Mike Rinder bearing the brunt of David Miscavige's right. Mike Rinder, Mr. Miscavige never laid a hand on Mike Rinder. I lived with Mike Rinder for over 35 years. I know every square inch of Mike Rinder's body. I know everything that's ever happened to him, every accident, every time he broke his wrist. I, I've been with him. We've been together all our lives. It's utterly ridiculous, and it isn't true. And I certainly would have seen it. And the reason why I know that is I happened to be in a meeting in January 2004 when Marty Rathburn suddenly went and leapt on top of Mike Rinder and fought him to the ground and started choking him and beating him. How is it that no one came forward I will answer to call the police? I will, answer, I will tell you. At that point in time, he had a personal conversation with me and said to me, and, I, I, and said to me specifically as he was bouncing his knee nonstop, Jenny, I think I'm going nuts. I think I'm crazy. And we thought, okay, we can help this man. We're going to have to help him with Scientology technology. Mm -hmm. It wasn't days later that he took off. So I, what is the procedure for dealing with somebody who is physically violent? I mean, because in any corporation in the United States, if, uh, if a superior assaulted, punched, kicked, strangled, uh, you know, somebody else in the company, that person would be out of the company and the police would be called. And what? he is out. And he was out. That's what you have to understand, yeah. Anderson. So for about three years, according to members of the church, mm -hmm. your husband was physically assaulting. It was in it was isolated incidents. It was well, a, this is an isolated incident. This is a consistent, virulent uh, physical harassment. Yeah, you're, that, we understand what you're saying, yeah. and here's the, the fact. No, what, what I'm saying is that you, 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 you were married to a man who, for three years, had a, was a high-ranking member of this church who was assaulting people, and and, and Mr. nothing Miscavige, seemed to be done about it. Mr. Miscavige was not at the, at the property at the time. Do you not have telephones? <clears throat> of course we have telephones. So I, I think you, you're being quite rude and quite yeah. insulting. Here's the bottom line. Here's the bottom line. There is no history of violence in the church. That there was isolated instances, and yes, you have that you do have written declarations that Marty Rathman was a violent man. So what do their ex husbands say about what they've said? The men accusing David Miscavige of physical violence? Well, we're gonna more now are an investigation into the Church of Scientology. Before the break, you heard from several ex-wives who are also current senior leaders in the church. They were upset at their ex-husbands who've left the church and are now making explosive charges that the church's current leader, David Miscavige, has physically abused other members of the church. Now, the women, along with the church spokesman Tommy Davis, called these men liars. They some of them were violent themselves and were removed from their positions in the church. The women say Marty Rathbun, the church's former inspector general, was violent. They also say their former construction manager for Scientology named Tom DeVock never showed any marks on his body from the beatings he said he had from Miscavige, and they called former marketing manager Jeff Hawkins a liar. They talked with all three men to get their responses to the allegations. Tom, you saw your ex-wife basically saying that there was never a mark on you, that she knew every inch of your body, she slept with you every night, she never saw any sign that you had been physically abused. Right. <clears throat> well, my comment yeah. on it, she, uh, um, it's true. Um, I don't know to begin with. Well, first, let me tell you this. Out of 19 years, I probably spent four years with her out of that entire time. Why? Because uh, of work, you guys were separate? I was in Florida. She was in California. I went to New York. She went to Madrid. And I never claimed to have bruises or scars or anything like that to begin with. So it's sort of irrelevant. But she was there and saw me uh, twice get hit by Miss Gavin. She, You say she saw you oh, get hit by David Miss Gavin. Yeah. Because she says you're lying that, that she know. never saw anything. I know. And, 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 and I don't hold that against her. I know that the pressure she's under, <clears throat> she's going to say that. She's going to say whatever she thinks is right and is going to protect the church and protect her eternity. Essentially, Tom, the church is also saying that, that you three are colluding together, that you, you've matched your stories, that you've been working on this, and, and you're out to destroy the church. Yeah. <clears throat> Let me dispel that right now. I, I mean, the last time I've talked to Marty, I have not seen Marty since he left. To give you an example, I've not seen him in person. We've not met anywhere. I talk to him occasionally, maybe once a month. He'll confirm that um, to say hello. How's you going, uh, Mike? I see a little bit more often. Live pretty close to him, but Mike Render. Mike Render, yeah, sorry, but we don't. You know, it, it, I'm not interested in it. I got nothing to do with it. I don't win if it does well. I don't win if it does badly. I don't. There's no. There's just nothing in it for me at all. <clears throat> I, don't, I have no intention to reform it, take over it, anything like that. That's not, I'm doing my own thing. I want to get on with my life at, you know, 46. It's time after coming out of there to get rolling. So it, it's nothing for me. I mean, I got no, 
I got no interest in it. Marty, you know, the church has also said, well, look, if, if, if the, all this stuff was going on, why didn't you speak out about this sooner? You left the church back in, in 2005. Anderson, you know, uh, if you ask any of the guys that were in similar circumstances, there's really a decompression period, and it can go from anywhere to two, four, five, many years to where you get sort of out from under that mindset that if you say anything negative or if you go after the church or if you say something that might be against particularly Miscavige, uh, your, your eternal salvation is gone forever. Um, and so it, it takes a while to sort of to sort of decompress from that uh, before you're even willing to talk about it to anybody, you know, a friend, a spouse, a loved one, let alone, uh, you know, get up and, and do something about it. Marty, when you saw your wife and what she was saying, what did you think? I, I had a lot of sympathy and pity. You know, Anderson, you asked about conspiracy allegations that they made. Now, let me tell you right now, the only conspiracy that exists out here is a bunch of people who suffered and experienced an experience that I don't think anybody can really fully grasp unless perhaps they're a war veteran or a, or a prisoner. And it's sort of a mutual aid situation where we're trying to help one another get back on our feet, uh, help one another get back some self-esteem, um, integrate back into the world, which we've been out of for, you know, until our, our, our middle ages. And uh, that's the only the only type of conspiracy that, that exists, it's more like an underground railroad as opposed to a conspiracy. Jeff, I mean, why would, you know, some of viewers have written in saying, why would these current Scientologists and, and ex-wives be saying all these things and, and, you know, sign affidavits and all have similar stories basically saying that, that all of you are lying? Well, there's a, there's a culture within Scientology that you do anything to protect the church. You say anything to protect the church. And they have what they call a, an acceptable truth, which means a, a, a truth, quote unquote, that is a, a, that forwards the church's image. Therefore, and it's really another term for a lie. They uh, they are willing to do anything. And as I've told you before, when I was in Scientology, I would have done the same thing. If if someone had come to me the day after David Miscavige beat me up and said, "Did he beat you?" I would have denied it. I would have said, "No way, that ever happened. Never, never, never." Exactly as Tommy Davis is saying. You know, one of the difficult things in doing this is in doing this story is that there's no physical evidence really on either side. Did, at the time that you say David Miscavige was attacking you, did you ever think about trying to document it with photographs? No, no. That wasn't my mindset at the time at all. Um, you know, the, uh, the, the, the way you feel when you're inside is that it's all you, it's your fault, uh, that he got mad at you and, uh, you know, you're put on the onto to physical labor and you're you're a, a pariah and so forth and so you don't think about documenting it you don't think about going to the police you just think about uh you know what you're being asked to do so you never thought about calling the police no no that didn't even enter my mind that would have been an instant i would have been instantly out of scientology if i had done that and i didn't want to go there at that at that time why why you didn't want to leave scientology i didn't want to leave scientology i didn't want to leave my wife uh, it's all I had known for 35 years, so I wasn't ready to cut the cord at that at that point. I just want to say one thing. I mean, they must have quoted Tommy Davis six or seven times about each one of us was demoted and then kicked out for all these crimes and all that business. I got to tell you, everybody you interviewed, Amy Scobie, Jeff Hawkins, Steve Hall, Tom DeVock, Mike Rinder, myself, 201, made self-determined decisions and walked out. None of those guys were kicked out. We walked out. I literally had to tell them, you got a week more to do whatever you want with me. Uh, they were giving me confessionals to see if they can fix it so I would stay. Uh, and I told them, you got a week more. Week came. I walked up to the gate. I said, open the gate. They wouldn't open it up. I jumped on top of it. You literally climbed over the gate. Oh, yeah. They weren't opening it. They would not open it. I said, look, I'm leaving. I threw my bag over. I got on top of the gate to get over it, at which point they opened it. <laughs> almost crushed my leg. Luckily, I got over and I walked out. There was no, I was not booted out. I was not told you're out. What, what do you say to people who aren't sure who to believe? <clears throat> you know, I don't know what to tell them. It's, the, it, you know, he said, she said, and, and they're going to believe what they want to believe. But again, it, to me, I put me on a light detector test. I do that in a heartbeat. You know, it's, it's, it's an odd thing. And they are, again, just trying to protect the church. I've got no reason to do this. Zero. I've got nothing to gain. Guys, I appreciate you talking again. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Thanks. you, Anderson. Well, over the past months, we've spoken at length. The former Scientology spokesman, Mike Rinder, Rinder spoke to us on the record and told us he was abused some 50 times by David Miscavige, but said he wouldn't interview with us on camera.
because he promised his first interview to the BBC. Church strongly denies what he claims, but once that interview is aired, he says he'd we would welcome an opportunity to come on our show and share his story. Now, once again, we'd like to point out that over the months, we have invited church leader David Miscavige on 360 to address these charges through his spokesman. He has declined. That invitation also still stands. You can watch our entire Scientology series on our website at ac360.com. That's where you can also join the live chat, which is now underway.